And like we always say, this is the day that the Lord hath made and I will rejoice and be glad in it. You've tuned in to Matt and Randy in the morning. We are here to encourage you in the word so that you can be strong in the faith and live victoriously in Christ. What I had on my heart today was rejoice. We always end with rejoice, but I'm going to start with rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. We who have accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of our lives, we have a reason to rejoice. No matter what comes our way, we know we are on the winning side. And because of that, we can rejoice. Psalms 71 23. That bird is definitely rejoicing. I love to hear the sounds of the birds. I just have to make my voice be louder than that bird. <laughs> but praise God. So Psalm 71 23 says, My lips shall greatly rejoice when I sing to you and my soul which you have redeemed. My tongue also shall talk of your righteousness all day long. For they are confounded, for they are brought to shame who seek my hurt. You know, we encourage one another. The word of our testimonies, when you gather together in church, that's why that is so important. For, so forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. Because when you gather together and you talk about, you know, the things that you went through that week, but yet God brought you through. You know, yes, we go through hard times, but... The Lord doesn't leave us alone. He is still with us. And we know that in the end, we will win. We have the victory because of Christ in us, the hope of glory. 1 Thessalonians 5 says this, starting in verse 1. But concerning the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I should write to you. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. For when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them, as labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they shall not escape. But you, brethren, are not in darkness. We who trust Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior are not in darkness, so that this day should overtake you as a thief. You are all sons of light and sons of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk are drunk at night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on that breastplate of faith and love, and as a helmet, the hope of salvation. When those negative thoughts, when you start doubting and you start thinking things that you know are not right, you know what? Put on that helmet of salvation. Remember that it's not dependent on what you have done or what you have. It is dependent on Christ. We stand in His righteousness, His hope. He is the undefeated King of kings and Lord of lords. There is none like him. There is no one higher than him. He has the ultimate final say. And he says he loves you. He cares for you. And when you are in him, you stand in victory no matter what comes your way. For God did not appoint us to wrath. We're not going to see the wrath of God when that day comes because we are in Christ. God Almighty will see Christ in us. We are the redeemed. It says, For God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with Him. Therefore, comfort one another and edify one another just as you also are doing verse 16 says rejoice always pray without ceasing in everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus we have to remember we are in Christ if we've made Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior we stand in him righteous because of what he did for us on Calvary nothing that we've done nothing that we've earned nothing that we could have paid for it is a gift of God 
to us that salvation that was given through Jesus Christ. Proverbs 10 says, The fear of the long Lord prolongs days, but the years of the wicked shall be shortened. The hope of the righteous will be gladness, but the expectation of the wicked will perish. The way of the Lord is strength for the upright, but the destruction will come to the workers of iniquity. 1 Peter 1.3 Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, and that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you. God is reserved in heaven for you, an inheritance that we can't even begin to imagine. It says, reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. How can we do this? Because of the power of God in us. That precious Holy Spirit that dwells in us gives us strength where it doesn't seem possible to have strength. Gives us a peace where it doesn't seem possible to have a peace. It is that gift of God to us, that precious Holy Spirit that teaches and guides us. We just have to learn to yield to the Holy Spirit more. And when those negative thoughts come and stuff like that, pick up the word and remember the word. Remember a praise song and get that mind on the Lord instead of on the negative junk of this world. It says in verse 6, In this you greatly rejoice. Get that? Greatly rejoice. Though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials, that the genuineness of your faith, being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen, you love. Though now you do not see him, yet believing, you rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls. What a glorious day that's going to be. Isaiah 61.10 says, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God. Psalms 119 verse 11 and then verse 111 verse 11 then verse 111. Your word I have hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. And verse 111 says your testimonies I have taken as a heritage forever for they are the rejoicing of my heart. This word when you hide it in your heart it will bring rejoicing because it will remind you of the goodness of God. It will remind you that if you fall and mess up, God is there to pick you up. He loves you. He cares for you. He is not there to bring you down, but he's there to bring you up. When we mess up, he washes us up. All we have to do is say, Lord, I'm sorry I messed up again. Oh, and he will embrace you with a love that this world can't compare to. Psalms 32 verse 11 be glad in the Lord and rejoice all you righteous and shout for joy all you upright in heart and as we always end Philippians 4 I'm going to do verse 6 first be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be made known to God and what happens the peace of God which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And now, verse 4, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I will say rejoice. Keep that praise song in your heart and rejoice in the Lord always. We'll see you tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. Be blessed. Listen to this again if you need to get those scriptures hidden in your heart.